All right, here in this video, we're gonna look at solving quadratic expressions by using the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula itself is derived by a method called completing the square, which you would learn a little bit later on. Now, if I have a quadratic expression written in standard form where it starts off ax squared plus bx plus c, and then the other side is equal to zero. So one side is equal to zero, and then it's written in the order starting with x squared, then x to the one power, then a number. We can solve for x by using this formula here, which says your answers for x would be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over two times a. And I got three examples that we're going to use here. We're gonna confirm our answers graphically afterwards. Okay, so look here at this first problem. We got negative r squared minus 12r plus 45 is equal to zero. Now, since I have one side equal to zero, I can solve for r by using the quadratic formula. I just gotta identify what a, b, and c are. Well, a is the number, is the coefficient of the squared term. So in this case, negative one is a. b is the coefficient of the uh, variable raised to the one power, so in this case, b is gonna be negative 12, and c is the constant, that's adds or subtracts onto the end, so c in this case is 45. All I need to do is plug in for a, b, and c into my quadratic formula. All right, so we plug everything in into our quadratic formula, negative one's where a's go, negative 12's where b's go, and 45 where c goes, and now we just have to simplify this. So negative one times negative 12 makes positive 12, so I got x is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of, well, negative 12 squared is the same thing as negative 12 times negative 12, or 144. And then now we have negative four times negative one times 45. And we wind up getting plus, uh, positive 180. So I had inside of my square root, I got 40, 144 plus 180, all divided by two times negative one, which would be negative two. Well, that's going to equal 12 plus or minus the square root of, well, 144 plus 180 is gonna give me 324 inside of that square root, all divided by negative two. Well, 324, because I'm trying to simplify 324 here, that's the same thing as four times 81, and I can take the square root of four, and I can take the square root of 81, so the square root of 324 is going to equal two times nine, which is equal to 18. So what that means is, what we have, let me change colors here. We have x is equal to 12 plus or minus 18 all over negative two. Well, how can I write that to see two separate values for x? Well, it's relatively simple. So what you would do is you'd write an expression for x, which is x is equal to 12 plus 18 over negative two. And then I would write an expression for x that had the minus. x equal to 12 minus 18 over negative two. And I would just solve those uh, for x. So this first one we would have, so 12 plus 18 is 30, divided by negative two is negative 15. And then my second expression, 12 minus 18 is gonna make negative six, divided by negative two makes positive three. So I get two answers for x of negative 15 and positive three. Now let's confirm that graphically with Desmos. All right, so I graphed my problem in here. I'm just using x instead of r's, and we're looking, our answers here are going to be where the graph crosses the x-axis. We got one x-intercept at negative 15 and the other one at three. Same two answers that we got by using the quadratic formula. All right, next one here. So we have negative 12x squared is equal to negative seven plus 12x. Well, in order to use a quadratic formula, I gotta have one side equal to zero. So what I'm actually gonna do this time is I'm gonna move the 12x squared to the right-hand side, just so that way it's one. It's only one thing to move instead of two. So I'm gonna add the 12x squared over. So I have zero is equal to 12x squared, and I'm gonna write it in standard form, plus 12x, minus seven. Now from here, since it's written in standard form and one side is equal to zero, we can use the quadratic formula. 
We can use the quadratic formula here to solve for x, and we just gotta identify our variables. Well, 12 is a, positive 12 is also b, and negative seven is going to be c, so we're gonna plug that into our quadratic formula to solve for x. So we got everything plugged in for a, b, and c. Now we just have to simplify what we have. So we'd have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of, well, 12 squared is 144. And then I need to put together negative four times 12 minus seven. That gives me positive 336. And then I got all over two times 12, which is 24. Well, we can put together the 144 into 336 and rewrite what's inside of the square root. And so we would have x is equal to negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 480 all over 24. And so from here, we want to look and see about simplifying the square root of 480. Well, the square root of 480 is, well, 480 is the same thing as 16 times 30, which means that it's going to be equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 30, which is the same thing as having 4 times the square root of 30. So what we're going to have, and I'm going to write this in a different color, we got x is equal to negative 12 plus or minus 4 square roots of 30 all over 24. And now we're going to break this up into two separate answers. So we'll have x is equal to negative 12 plus 4 over the square root of 30 divided by 24 as one answer. And then the other one will be the same thing, but with the minus in between. So we'll say x is equal to negative 12 minus 4 over the square root of 30 divided by 24. And the way you simplify this is you're going to take these answers and you're going to break them up again. So that same thing would be negative 12 over 24 plus 4 square root of 30 over 24 is equal to x. Well, negative 12 over 24 is the same thing as negative 1 half. So I got x is equal to negative 1 half plus 4 over 24 is the same thing as 1 6. So I got the square root of 30 divided by 6 as the second one here. So there is one answer. And what you're going to notice is that the other answer is going to be the exact same thing, but with a minus. So I do all the work once. And if I trust myself, I would just write the same two numbers with a different sign in between them. And so here are our two values for x. All right, so I graphed our parabola. And I also typed in our two answers so that way you could see the decimal equivalents. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the graph or click on the graph where it crosses the x-axis because those are our answers. And we should wind up with the same decimals. Now Desmos rounds it as and the three decimal places versus the couple that I have written. And we look and we see that we're getting the same answers. Okay, last one here. So I want to solve this one for values of k. In order to do that, we need to write it in standard form. So I need to get all of my information on the same side. So I got k squared plus k plus 11 is equal to zero. All right, so now we want to plug into our quadratic formula. We'll remember where what a, b, and c are. And so in our case, a is equal to one, b is equal to one, and c is equal to positive 11. And we're going to plug all of that in to our quadratic formula to get values for x. So x would equal negative b, so negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11, all over 2 times 1. And well, we're going to go through and simplify this. So this gives us x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root. We got 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 times 11 makes 44, all over 2. Now we go through and start trying to simplify the square root and we have negative one plus or minus the square root. Well, one minus 44 makes negative 43 all over two. And now we look and we say, oh, wait a minute, got a problem. I'm taking the square root of a value that's less than zero. That cannot happen and produce real number answers. So we're gonna write no real solutions. And then we're gonna go look at what happens with our graph when this is the case. 
So I type in our graph after we got everything on the same side and we look and notice how the graph doesn't cross the x-axis. The x-intercepts uh, between the graph and or the intercepts of the graph along the x-axis are the real solutions. This one has none and that's what we got by using the quadratic formula. 